to admit that when I first heard that four installations of public art stay in the Hunter Collection, be out in the community, well, it sounded like an interesting proposition. Well, I had no idea what we were getting into in dealing with all the uh, legal ramifications of our collection being on someone else's property and uh, lease agreements with the city and everyone's been working just great to put it all together. Well, the origins of the public art project with the Benwood Foundation really started a year and a half or so ago. Uh, Christy Huntley and I were talking about a variety of things that the Hunter might be able to do and like a lot of partnerships we tried to see how we could align our mission with the goals of other organizations and it worked out that with the Benwood's initiative to really um, give a shot in the arm to the public art movement in Chattanooga and the Hunter's desire to take the Hunter off the hill and make it more a part of the community, they really meshed well with the idea of putting art in public places keeping the works in, as part of the Hunter's Collection, but really making them available to the public 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So part of the process of this is, um, someone like Alan calls and says, would you be interested in this? And we say yes, we send her some things. Then a couple months later, she calls and she says, you know, could you send us a drawing or something? And then we do this proposal drawing. And then you have this great thing, as Ellen described, of voting, which we thought was, a, was such a brilliant idea because the museum gets to be the gatekeepers but yet the public gets to choose. So it's a, it's a community involvement, it's a collaboration, it's a win-win situation. It was, and the thing is, is that we knew lots of people who voted because anybody could vote. And of course, we asked people if they would vote. Often. Um, <laughs> so I made a drawing, made my proposal of uh, this leaf leaning against a tree. Then they said there was going to be a vote. And I had just assumed that the vote had to do with uh, the board of the, the museum or something like that. I, I didn't, wasn't aware it was a worldwide vote, you know. And uh, that it was, you could vote as many times as you wanted. And it was kind of like uh, Dancing with the Stars or, or uh, the American Idol, the American Idol deal, yeah, you know. <laughs> Or just the lottery. <laughs> yeah, the public voting aspect of the project was really something that we talked about at the, at the beginning that we wanted to involve and engage the, our, our audience. Um, we talked about how it would be organized on the website and a couple of board members asked whether there, we'd have a counter um, that would show what the vote was so far. And I have to admit that at the very beginning I felt like that wouldn't be a smart thing to do because I'd be embarrassed if only three people voted for a particular piece. And the way it, it sort of grew and uh, evolved over uh, several months, we had over 12,000 people voting for the work. And those people then have learned all about Chattanooga. They think Chattanooga is like, and we've already had visitors who have come, and we're having more people come, lots of number of museum directors to come and visit because that voting process allowed people outside of Chattanooga a, a way of finding out and and they are so impressed. And then another uh, part of the project was uh, working with partners in the community and I think that that's something that the Hunters has a strong tradition with not only with the Benwood Foundation but a number of other organizations in the community and we partnered with the Chattanooga Zoo and we partnered with the zoo for a variety of reasons but one was that we wanted to have some of the work out in the public where there was a lot of people. And the zoo has about 200,000 visitors a year, and so we thought that it would be a great opportunity to do something with the zoo. And the work that was selected, the piece is called The Troop, and it was designed by, uh, uh, created by an artist named Bart Walter from Baltimore. And 
BART has this wonderful tradition of uh, spending a tremendous amount of time out in the field and he's uh, worked with people like Jane Goodall over the years and he knows his subject matter and I think the public really responded to chimpanzees as the subject because of Hank uh, more than anything else but I think that what Bart's piece brings to the public is an opportunity to see these chimpanzees in a way that they won't when they go further in, into the zoo. Every year there's something more exciting, but this year something truly wonderful has happened at the Chattanooga Zoo. Um, when we look at public art Chattanooga, the Hunter Museum, the Benwood Foundation, and the Chattanooga Zoo, in some ways that might seem to be some unlikely partners. But when you look at the theme behind this beautiful piece of art by Bart Walter, by Bart Walter I think you can understand how excited we were to be a part of it. I mean, you know, guys, our zoo never dreamed of this. And I think our, our board members who are here tonight back in the early days certainly never expected to see us all gathered here this evening to celebrate this wonderful, wonderful addition to the zoo. It's been such an eye-opening experience getting to work with an artist of his caliber. It's been wonderful discovering all the great ways that we can partner with a hunter, finding new friends, finding new ideas, and of course remembering our, our friends at the Benwood Foundation who have been with us from the beginning. Thank you very much. As I found myself walking through the forest of Uganda, I never pictured that I would be here doing this sort of thing with the Benwood Foundation, the Hunter Museum of Art, the Chattanooga Zoo. Chattanooga has been very impressive. There is an amazing community spirit here, a togetherness. The Benwood Foundation, the Hunter Museum of Art, the Chattanooga Zoo are all coming together to make this project possible. Every partner I've worked with has been splendid at coming together, putting whatever differences they might have aside and working towards a common goal. That's unusual and it's quite refreshing. By having Benwood and Lyndhurst, you are like really fortunate and, and unique to have that. Um, St. Petersburg, Tampa, where we lived, has nothing like that. They don't have that base, um, so we're, we're very impressed. Uh, but while we were here, as, as Carol said, we worked with so many people, and, and as is the way we like to work, we. We like to come into a community, become part of that community, and this was really the, the optimum opportunity to do that. And the, the reception we've had from, from passerbys, just people talking to us about this, even away from the site, uh, about the excitement about the sculpture going up, about what's going on in this wonderful park, you know, that we're, we just, uh, you know, we're so thrilled that we can be part of, of the, the vision of this particular park on this riverfront. And, in, in this town. And I also like the fact that if you know people want to crawl on it or touch it or you know, whatever, they, they're more than welcome. Maybe the people in the park don't feel that way about it, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like people to interact with work. I like I like it when you see a a bronze that's you, that all the patina has been rubbed off because people have been touching it, you know, because it's because it is a physical thing. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, I know we, as far as strength, you try to, to our kind of judge with at the foundry. The, the thing we've come up with is if you can get a huge football team and they're drunk. It's got a withhold of a drunk football team, that whatever they would do to it or could do to it. I think the whole project is, in, in some ways, um, sort of a culmination of a lot of things. And, and I think that uh, the Hunter, uh, over the time that I've been here in the last nine years, we have really have tried to make the museum much more accessible to the public. Uh, we often quote Ruth Holmberg, who said that it's time to take the Hunter off the hill and make it more a part of the community. And, I think that the, the public art project with the Benwood Foundation has really taken the Hunter in another direction in, in bringing our collection out into the community in a way that it hasn't been before. And I think to partner with uh, the Benwood Foundation again with this effort, to partner with the public art Chattanooga, uh, I think are examples of ways in which the, uh, the Hunter has become sort of woven into the tapestry of Chattanooga. I think that the public art project 
in a lot of ways is an example of those intangible things that uh, VW talked about when they decided to uh, build their plant here in Chattanooga. Those intangible things that make up a community is the architecture, it is the urban fabric, it is the downtown, and I think that the public art program plays a part of that as well.